Hello there, good afternoon or good morning everyone and welcome to today's webinar. We definitely appreciate you taking the time to join us today. With today's webinar, we're going to be focusing on simple tips that your organization can employ to help increase online conversions and shift more sales to your online channel. So we're going to be discussing customer expectations around online sales, especially as it relates to the mobile channel simple tools for optimizing the e-commerce experience for your patrons, and then also some strategic tools around pricing and promotions to really help drive more sales to that online channel. My name is Wendy Inez. I'm the sales director at Accesso Showware. I'm based out of Orange County, California, and joining me today is my longtime colleague and friend, Missy Allnut, sales engineer for Accesso Showware. She's based out of the upstate New York area. Good morning, Missy. Good morning. So before we get started, I'd like to go over just a few housekeeping items so you know what to expect and then how to participate in today's session. You may have already noticed that your voices have been muted and they'll remain muted throughout the session. However, you will be able to type questions to our moderator, Katie, throughout the webinar. And then at the end of the session, we'll do a Q&A from your typed questions. So very good, let's get started. I want to start our session with an overview of the Accesso and product line and give you a little background on our business units, our market presence, and our commitment to a positive guest experience. And that starts with believing that technology has the power to redefine the guest experience. Everything we do at Accesso starts with thinking about that guest experience first. And that puts a focus on simplifying operations improving guest satisfaction, and then ultimately driving growth for our clients. Accesso has a suite of solutions that service ticketing and data management from queuing products to ticketing and point of sale software to distribution channels to marketing and personalization of the guest experience. Our solutions help solve problems and enhance the patron experience at every touch point during the journey. And our approach is to let our clients focus on what they do best, which is providing outstanding experiences for their patrons, while we provide the technology to support those efforts. From theme parks to performing arts, zoos to festivals, our products and services support some of the top attractions in the world. And whether it be food and beverage point of sale, virtual line reservations, ticketing or guest management, our solutions help streamline and simplify operations for a wide variety of venues. So what you should take away from this overall is that Accesso serves up the right experience for the right industry. All these diverse markets may appeal to different fan bases and provide different overall guest experiences, but they all have one major thing in common, and that's the demand for simple online ticket sales. Accesso's focus on research and development is a major point of differentiation for our products. In 2016, Accesso was able to invest $17.9 million directly back into our R&D across its platforms. And honestly, that's equal to some of our competitors' entire annual revenues. We invest heavily in our products because our industry demands it, because our clients benefit from it, and because it makes a positive experience in the fan experience. Innovation is core to our business and our partnerships, and it's part of our commitment to our clients that our software never be frozen in time, but constantly evolving to meet new demands. Access, we're going to start by shifting our focus to the Accesso Shower product and how this product can help meet the customer demands for a smooth, positive online sales experience. Accesso Showware, of course, supports both e-commerce solutions as well as on-site ticketing applications. But in this webinar, we're going to be focusing primarily on the online channel and then helping to shift some of those offline or box office sales to that self-service channel. So why do con online conversions matter and why is this a metric worth paying attention to? Well, higher rates of conversion undoubtedly mean an increased sales for your organization, but they can also result in a positive guest experience for your patrons and guests. Patrons want the convenience of buying online. They want to shop 24-7 in their slippers between home and work demands and my personal advice between commercials. Uh, I mentioned this as a self-service channel because the patron's doing all, all the work. 
by driving sales online, you're also easing the strain on your box office in so many ways. You have to staff and train a box office. You have to turn on the lights and the phones. You got to pay for the computer equipment and the ticket stocks. And box office sales are, are the most expensive sales channel to support. An online sale avoids all of those costs. Now, don't get me wrong, no disrespect to our wonderful box office operations. We love our box office folks, and they provide a level of service and personal attention that should cost more. And we'll talk more about that when we discuss pricing strategies. But cultivating your online channel will help to streamline your operations overall and ultimately sell more tickets. So this is a fairly stunning statistic. The latest report on shopping cart abandonment reports that merchants are leaving $4.6 trillion on the table every year. There's nothing worse from a vendor perspective than having those tickets or that merchandise or that donation in the cart, and then the patron walks away without completing the transaction. So we want to explore the why and understand what we can do to ensure that those transactions don't get abandoned. So let's look at customer expectations and easy things that we can do to optimize your e-commerce site for conversions. Again, let's look at the why, why many carts are abandoned. Customers have certain expectations when it comes to purchasing it on, online. And as we go through these statistics, you may find yourself having experienced this and saying, forget it and walked away from a sale as well. 56% abandoned carts due to unexpected costs at the last minute. These can be costly convenience fees or shipping costs, et cetera. A patron might be able to commit to a $50 ticket, but then that price creeps up to include other costs on the final screen, and now it's more than they can justify spending. One in four will drop out of a sale if it's too complex, and I honestly see this all the time. How hard should I have to work to be able to figure out how to purchase something online? This includes too many steps in the purchase process, having to set up an account just to shop, complex password requirements. If I can't pick my own seat or can't remember how to enter the coupon co code or how do I get my member discount, if it's all just too complex, people will simply walk away. Next, 50% will cancel their purchase if their preferred payment method wasn't available. And I feel like I'm guilty of this too. I like to use American Express online. If a vendor doesn't accept American Express, I'll probably go somewhere else to buy. How about PayPal? And our Accesso show where clients right now might probably be saying, yeah, how about PayPal? Well, I'm happy to announce here today that we're in final development to offer clients the ability to accept PayPal payment methods and to offer payment plans to their patrons through PayPal credit. The current release date is on track for early to mid-October, and we are actively soliciting for beta clients. So listen up. If that's something that's of interest to you and your organization, please let us know, and uh, we'll follow up with you after the webinar. So let's talk a little bit about mobile statistics as part of a customer's expectations. Shopping cart abandonment is highest on the mobile channel, 84%. Patrons demand a simple and straightforward sales flow on their phones. Uh, do I have to pinch or expand the screen in order to see the info? Do I have to download a separate app to shop or buy? Can I use my coupon or access my membership benefits from my mobile? Or is that only on the full site? If it's not easy to do, they're out. 64% of mobile users want that page to load within four seconds. It just has to be fast, fast, fast. And the reality is, is that if you don't offer a good experience, patrons will turn to a competitor to get it. Now that's certainly a little more relevant to say a, a widget that can be sold across multiple competing sites. Tickets are more unique, but let's face it, you know, if the mobile experience to get tickets to your favorite show was really awful, you'd probably still endure it, but that would color your experience. And our goal is for a positive experience that brings your customers back time after time. Okay, so we talked about why conversions matter, the lost opportunities with cart abandonment, and the customer expectations around online and mobile performance for transactions. So let's solve some of these issues by optimizing e-commerce for your guests. It always helps to start with the basics, so let's look at Website Design 101. I encourage the clients that I speak with to look at their own homepage and then ask themselves if they were a client if they were a patron, could they easily find and purchase the tickets that they want? 
you know, and this starts with, is there a buy tickets button on the home page? Is it part of the header so that it persists on every page? Can I still find it if I'm several pages deep in my navigation around your site? So make sure your ticket button is visible, clear, and accessible. Prioritize your call to action and make sure that the click gets the patron to what's promised. A buy now button better land me on a buy page, whereas maybe a learn more button can drop me on a page that has more information about the event or more description or content. Organize your content. Keep it simple for your casual site visitor to scroll through. Short sections of copy with large and easy to read section headers and simple imagery like a photo or a short video. Clear and concise is the key. Less is more. Use white space. Don't cram your content together and let each element kind of breathe. Utilize responsive design, meaning that the display is optimized, whether you're seeing it on your phone, your tablet, or your laptop or your desktop. And don't overlook testing these strategies. It can be a little overwhelming to implement a lot of changes at once, but if you've employed a few of these changes and monitored it, see how it's impacted by traffic. Are you using Google Analytics or Tag Manager to track your site's performance? And if you're not aware, you can actually plug in Google Analytics and tracking to your Accessa show or ticketing pages to help filter and help report conversions. White label design builds trust and creates a seamless transition for your users. The Accessa so show where platform supports a number of customizations and content management tools that allow you to control the guest experience with your look and your voice. There are over 40 system messages that you can customize to speak directly to your patrons. Use these to tell the patrons that membership benefits are available, that coupons can be applied, or to ask for a donation, etc. Accessible show work platform is completely 100% 100 respons 100 responsive design, and you should ask yourself, is yours as well? Responsive design means that no matter what device you're using, the system automatically responds with the correct screen size. The Accessible show work system doesn't require that the patron download an app, for example, just to shop on their phone. And all the functionality is there as well. Same as the full site, you have coupons and access discounts are supported. So we've already talked about how important mobile sales are to e-commerce and how rampant cart abandonment can be if there isn't a positive mobile experience. So consider responsive design for your own site navigation even before they get to the ticketing site. In this vein of discussing optimizing e-commerce for your guests, we wanna discuss offering some of the same products for online that you do on site. So ticket bundles, packages, memberships, even gift cards or other merchandise op options can be sold online. Think again about that self-service aspect and taking pressure off the box office. So even if your strategy isn't to offer every single package online, what about offering just your best selling or your most desirable packages through the e-commerce site? The key is make it easy for your guests to purchase online. And we touched on this concept a bit earlier. One of the biggest reasons for card abandonment is unexpected costs at the end of the transaction, often, often around shipping costs or extra fees. So Accessa Showware does support an option for all-in pricing that displays the end price right from the beginning. So even from the point that a patron is picking their seats when they're seeing that different price level, they're actually seeing those price levels with fees included. Your organization sets that fee that you want in the back end of the system. It shows the all-in price, and that reduces any friction or pain points during the checkout process. Patrons commit to that price right from the start, and then it avoids any, any surprises at the end. We're also solving for this major reason for card abandonment. Remembering that about 50% of customers will abandon a purchase if their desired 
purchase method isn't available. You want to be able to give your patrons multiple payment options online, including gift cards, credit cards, and then we teased this a little earlier, payment plans. Gift cards are supported through our Value Tech partnership. These cards have that mag stripe on the back and a unique number on the front, and they act just like a prepaid prepaid credit card with a loaded balance that can be swiped at the box office or a number entered online for payment. They could be a great marketing vehicle too with branded cards that can make great gifts for the holidays or all year long. And then as I mentioned earlier, we're in the final development to offer your patrons the ability to accept PayPal as a payment method and to offer payment plans to their patrons through PayPal credit. Payment plans are ideal for large value purchases like season tickets or VIP packages, and PayPal manages the reoccurring payment piece. You just get your full value payment up front. And in case you're wondering why we chose to partner with PayPal, they're a market leader with over 203 million active users transacting over $1.7 billion. And as a final stat, 83% of customers are likely to re recommend that service, and that really says a lot. So again, keep in mind that that release date is on track for October. We're actively soliciting for a beta client. So again, if you're interested, let us know. Finally, make checkout fast and easy, and we've got this one handled for you as well. It's been just over a year or so that we at Accesso Showware took our own advice and created Streamline Checkout Online, which is now standard on all of our on all of our client sites. So Streamline Checkout happens all in one page, which reduces the amount of clicks needed to purchase tickets on it and provides simple visual cues and guides like large green buttons that help guide your customers along the way. The security certificate is prominently displayed, and there's an automatic error detection, for example, when you forget to input your street address. We also have a version that supports a guest checkout, so the patron doesn't have to create an account to buy. And that's especially useful for high volume GA events, attractions, or destination events. And then lastly, we support a login with Facebook as an option. And all these tips can result in increased conversions and reduced cart abandonment. So this, I think, is the most interesting part of our presentation. Let's talk about some strategic ways that you can drive online purchases. Amazon attributes 35% of its revenue to cross-selling, and we've seen this tactic for people who bought this also bought that. And who's going to argue with Amazon on this one? Why shouldn't we apply this to ticketing as well? Cross-sells and upsells work, and suggested selling works, and it's a great strategy to increase your average revenue per patron. Let's expand on that upsell and cross-sells. Use the suggested selling options on your event page to help promote similar events, or use the upsell or call out pop out on secondary offers. And if that performance is part of a package or a bundle, you can offer a discount to purchase the package instead of just the single ticket. How about parking as an upsell? Are you charging for VIP parking? I mean, why not? How about a voucher for concessions? Maybe a glass of wine at intermissions. Maybe you can promote a membership or a donation. I mean, try it all. The system supports you being able to promote different upsells on every ticket. So test it. Try different offers. Absolutely nothing to lose except the opportunity. Online owner only offers are a great way to give your customers an incentive for that self-service sale. Use the integrated email marketing tools within Accesso Showware to mine your database, to target patron segments, and then send them off an online only discount offer. The system supports coupons, one-time only access codes for discounted performances, member-only deals, or password-protected pre-sales. Consider a VIP membership that gets patrons the opportunity to buy online before the general public. That's another great way. And here's a strategy that just makes sense. Support a fee structure that incentivizes your patrons to use the web. This goes back to understanding your cost per transaction and that a self-service web sale 
costs your organizations less than a walk off walk up box office sale. So at minimum, you should consider charging the same fees across all sales channels from web to walk up to phones. But charging less online, that's a great incentive to shift those sales to the web. And your system will support web only fees, uh, web only price codes. Those can be programmed with different fees than a box office sale to help support that. So make a point of promoting lower fee web sales and try testing that strategy. Uh, make sure you're communicating it on the site. Maybe send an email to your database and help kind of train your patron base to, uh, to use the web and to see how easy it is to purchase online. So finally, we'll talk a little bit about Roundup and Roundup strategies. Roundup simply prompts the patron at the end of their ticket order to consider giving a small donation from pennies to dollars to help support your organization. And this also goes back to making the process easier for your guests. It allows you to ask your patrons at a time that is convenient for them when they're already engaged with you. And what we've actually learned from our clients that use Roundup was that 50% use of those Roundup donations were for $5 or more. So not just pennies, but generous giving. And 55% enjoy donating at checkout. So Roundup works, it works well. So try it even if your organization isn't one that typically takes an in-house donation. Maybe you consider working with a regional sister organization or a national fund to help raise awareness and community spirit. And part of our strategy might not might be to set your ticket prices so that they're easily rounded up to the next full dollar for a donation. So that's a great strategy, especially if you're a nonprofit to help encourage a minor give. Another strategy is to change out those asks on a monthly or quarterly basis. Patrons are more likely to give to funds that appeal to them. So try out different ones. If you offer several different giving campaigns, swap them out on the Roundup offer every month and keep it fresh for them. So let's hear a little bit about how our clients have been successful with just a couple of changes. And we want to talk about the uh, Seattle Thunderbirds Hockey Club. And by the way, the 2017 WHL champions, they are a great example of strategic pricing. They implemented reduced fees overall and value priced some of their lower price tickets with lower fees. And then they sell season subscriptions along with single game tickets and even mid-season mini plan packages. I also want to mention the Porter County Fair. They've done a nice job of increasing their revenue per patron by combining ticket offers with things like a carnival wristband upsell or selling buddy passes, which are kind of their two for one offers. And then they even promote special members only discounts and create, create a demand to be part of their VIP experience. So with that, we're I'm going to dive into some uh, additional examples of the concepts that we discussed today with Missy, and we'll do that during our live demo portion of our presentation. So Missy, I am going to pass it to you. Take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Wendy. And thank you to everybody who's joined our webinar today and taken time to, to see what we have to offer. Um, I know that Wendy's talked a lot about tips and tricks. And we're hoping that uh, you know, she shared some of the, these things that are making you think about how you might be able to incorporate them into your sites um, and hopefully, uh, bottom line, raise those conversion rates. So what I would like to do today is show you some of these tips in action and really what better way than to showcase um, these tips uh, with some of our clients um, and some of our clients that do it well. So on my screen initially is uh, um, Grand Opera House in Oshkosh. They've been with us for probably about four years now. Um, so first off, uh, we talked about the tickets um, and a ticket button to be placed on um, up above the fold and be able to follow through that entire sale. So um, the Grand does that well and offers the ability to purchase tickets right off the top. If I slide down a little bit, you're going to see that they have a good use of white space throughout their entire site. And if I hover over any one of their different events, you can see that a learn more button appears. Wendy talked a little bit about learn more. When I click on learn more, that's what I want. I want more information 
about this particular event. I want to know maybe if I do want to go to this uh, particular event. And then right from the Learn More page, I have the ability to be able to buy tickets. And then the buy tickets should deep link me directly into that buying page. Again, no, uh, no illusions. Um, everything is um, spelled out correctly and I can get where I want to go. Our next client that we want to talk about is going to be South Bend. Let me do a quick refresh here. South Bend Civic Center has been with us for several years as well. Uh, you're going to see that they use large graphics. Again, they've got their tickets and shows above the fold. You're also going to see here the ticks button at the top, which is awesome because it looks like a ticket. Um, you see it very easily. If I slide down again, they are just promoting some of their upcoming events. And when I hover, it just kind of illuminates these different events. It's easy to see. Again, white space, less is more. Brooklyn Center for the Performing Arts. Um, we'll look at two different sites with them. This is their main site. Uh, and you're gonna see that obviously they have the tickets, the buy tickets on their, on their main page as well. They also have the donation button. We need to spoke a little bit about donations. Make it clear, make things transparent. If you're asking for donations, put it on your main page. Make it easy for your patrons to be able to find that. They have a nice scrolling events bar. And what I really love about their site is their calendar. So if I just look at October, you're gonna see everything that has an event or any date that has an event is illuminated in red. Easy to find. If I hover over any one of these dates, you're gonna see whatever performances are available for that date. And easy buy tickets button. I can easily click on the tickets to buy them. And purchasing tickets will bring me directly, again, deep linking into the Accessor Showware backend where the transaction is going to be. Wendy also talked a lot about messaging, talked a lot about customized messaging, and they use it very well here. This is a GA event, but it lets you know exactly where this performance is going to take place um, and gives them some more information. If I go directly to Brooklyn Center for the Performing Arts, their excessive show our backend side, so this is um, our backend you're gonna see some different things. Obviously the donate button moves forward. Their buy button moves forward. They incorporate some widgets, making it easy to filter uh, different performances to find exactly what the patron is looking to purchase. You're gonna see that they feature their multi-pack, their pick your own. Um, they talk about substantial discounts. So again, using messaging to help promote that sale will help their patrons determine whether or not they want to be able to purchase tickets or purchase this multi-pack. If I look at memberships, we talked a little bit about memberships. You want to be able to offer everything through that online sale, whether it be tickets, donations, or even becoming a member. They offer different membership levels. Each member membership level has a range or a price range. The nice thing about price ranges within the backend system of the Accessor Shower platform is that a portion of that membership can be allocated towards a campaign. So what a great way to be able to not only gain a member and that member having the possibility of perks or benefits, but also being able to drive some money into specific donations or campaigns. Our next site we're going to look at is Lakewood Cultural Center. And I think what you're probably getting to see, I've gone through about half of our sites now, um, is their white label branding. It doesn't matter where you are during this entire process, everything is branded to our partners, our clients. Um, so that gives, like Wendy said, 
that gives a patron a sense of security. They don't feel they've left your site. They don't feel they're being you know, pushed off somewhere else to purchase their tickets. Uh, when you also talked about responsive design, it is so important uh, for your site to be responsive design. Well, we certainly are. So if I take Lakewood and I just bring it down into a phone type size, and it doesn't matter. I mean, I can make it into uh, my iPad size or down into my phone size. Everything scales accordingly, allowing your patrons to be able to uh, choose and pick and choose and go through that entire process utilizing that device. Drop down menus are easy to see, easy to read, and easy to maneuver through. We still offer the searching capabilities and you still have the cart. So you can still see what you have in your basket. Um, the Lakewood um, also offers uh, different bundles. So they present that at the top of their list. They want to drive more sales towards a bundle. And if I slide down, you're gonna see some of their individual events as well. I'm going to just take a quick look at if I can find it here, uh, one of their uh, one of their events, and buy tickets to Go Dog Go. Um, again, everything renders according to the way it should look. I can buy one of the two different tickets, ticket times, I should say, which will bring me into the sale process itself. I can do quick pick. I can pick my own seats. I'm at my shopping cart. Um, another way uh, that Wendy was talking about, again, there's 40 plus customized messages. They're using it very well here in the shopping cart. They talk about the coupon code because they're allowing their patrons to utilize coupon codes. They're talking about discounts. Um, they're giving their patrons a clear understanding of how to get through this process. That's what you want, transparency and simply, uh, simplicity. We'll go ahead and proceed to our checkout. I'll do a quick login. Secure checkout. This is our streamlined checkout. Everything is on one page. You're not going through page to page to get through to finalize the sale. I have my two tickets. I have multiple ways to pick as far as my delivery method. We have multiple credit cards. And I'll just make up one just to get to our next step. And then we complete the order. Everything is done through responsive design. Everything is on my handheld device. And another thing to point out is the Roundup. So Lakewood utilizes um, this area to be able to allow their patrons to be able to round up to the next dollar. Again, bringing more revenue into your organization. Our next client is gonna be Union Colony Civic Center. Um, again, ticket link on the, on the upper on the upper side. So again, we can purchase tickets. We could, you know, look at um, ticket um, um, questions, sorry, yeah, et cetera. So a lot of information under the ticket button. Uh, we have a nice scrolling animated bar showing us all of our upcoming performances with clear purple buy ticket buttons. How can you possibly miss any of this? I'm gonna wait and I'm going to pick on Dirty Dancing, or yes, Dirty Dancing. So I'll wait for my next performance. And we'll go ahead and take a look at this performance. Dirty Dancing, I can purchase individual tickets for. You can see that I've got a couple days that I have the ability to choose from, but up above you're gonna see three different bundles. It clearly displays that Dirty Dancing is part of a bundle. I came to this site knowing I wanted to come to Dirty Dancing. 
I may now consider purchasing one of these bundles knowing that Dirty Dancing is a part of it and that I have the ability to pick other shows and form my own small package and probably at a discounted rate as well. Misty, I just want to point out really quickly to folks who may not realize that, um, you know, Union Colony calls it their um, their bundle differently than Brooklyn Center calls their bundle. So you can have a multi-pack, you can have pay and play. There's all kinds of different ways that you can name that bundle. So customize it. Absolutely. And that's that's all done on the on the back end of the system. And it's what we call an alias. So I'm going to throw a couple quick tickets into my basket just to show you um, that Union Colony utilizes what we have in our system called, it's called out a call out or an upsell. Um, Wendy talked a little bit about parking and that's exactly what they do. They offer valet parking um, at 30% off if you purchase it today within the package. So I don't want to have to go and find parking down the street. Yeah, absolutely. Sign me up. And I can now create that multi-transactional basket, uh, get my valet parking at 30% off, and be able to show up at the venue and be able to have my car parked for me. And you're going to see too, they have they utilize coupon codes as well. Wendy also mentioned about the memberships. Um, up here it talks about memberships. They utilize memberships as well, and obviously members bring in benefits, and I could possibly get some discounted prices or even purchase tickets before general public. So um, a lot of messaging through our solution to be able to provide to your patrons during this online online sale. So our next client is um, Alaska Center for the Performing Arts or Centratix. Wendy talked about all-in-one pricing and Centratix or Alaska utilizes all-in-one pricing. Um, they realized several years ago that there was this really high level of cart abandonments and they realized through testing that the cart abandonment happened at the shopping cart. So they um, realized that it was probably those fees that were being put onto those tickets. And as Wendy said, you know, you sign up for a certain price point, you get to that basket and you realize that it could go up another, you know, eight, nine dollars or more. Uh, I might abandon it as well because I've already thought in my head that price might be maybe fifty dollars. Um, so once they've incorporated, once they turned and turned over their site to all in pricing, they quickly noticed a big swing and a big swing, meaning that the cart abandonment decreased specifically and very fast. So if I look at the sales transaction for Centratex, I will just go ahead and just purchase some tickets. If I look at Quick Pick, it shows my price point. If I look at purchasing my tickets anywhere within the price point or in the venue, it's going to show me that same price point. If I hover over seat, it's going to still show that $56 seat. If I put that seat in my basket, it's still going to show me that $56 seat. So that's what all in pricing does for you. Um, it takes any fees that you may have, rolls it all up into that price point. Um, all the way through that transaction, you are, you are saying the price point is going to be $56. It has not wavered whatsoever. We do offer the ability to put the show fees. Um, I can easily look at that and then I can see. But the point of this is, is that I've already committed to $56. So seeing the fees at the end probably isn't going to motivate me to try and find a cheaper price somewhere else uh, because um, I've already committed to that $56. Our next stop is going to be the Accesso Showwear Center. Um, they've got a huge, large animated banner scrolling continuously. And you're going to see they've got a buy now button on each one or a more. And again, it's being transparent. If I just want to know more information, I should click on more and just get more information. If I'm ready to purchase, 
I should be able to click on that buy now button and be able to buy immediately. You're also gonna see at the top, they've got a really nice orange big buy tickets button. Um, it's visual, it moves through the entire site um, and it allows me to know one-stop shopping. I know that if I click on that button, I'm gonna be able to buy tickets. Clicking on that button will drive me directly to the AccessoShower back end. Um, everything again, branded to the AccessoShower Center where I can see their featured events and be able to pick and choose based on filters or based on what I wanna be able to purchase a ticket for. Bright orange buttons help me move through my sale. I have the ability to purchase, you know, through the whole arena, or I can do quick pick. Which will bring me to my shopping cart and they also utilize the upsell uh, for different things. And this one is their reserved parking with special entry and other benefits. So again, the option and the ability for me as a patron to be able to buy my ticket for my show and be able to buy reserved parking and not have to wonder about where I'm going to park. Kansas Crossing Casino. So obviously a casino client. And I just take a quick stroll through their purchase process and First off, you're going to see here, tickets are only available online for the show. Wendy talked a little bit about this. Make some of your shows online only. Um, what's it going to do? It's going to increase that conversion rate for sure, right? Um, but it also is going to drive the sales to the most convenient way for you to be able to sell those tickets. The other thing that they do is because it is online only, is they only offer printed home and mobile delivery. get to my shopping cart and you're going to see here printed home and mobile delivery would be my only two delivery methods offered to me so will call is completely cut out and i only have the ability to be able to go mobile or be able to do that whole printed home so again driving more sales and keeping um, your box office a little stress-free our last client to take a quick look at is going to be olympia theater um, Olympia Theater, um, I just want to show really quickly uh, that they offer a charge for will call tickets. And I know Wendy talked to you about the strategy behind this um, and the ability to be able to push those online sales. Um, and one of the ways to do that is to not put a per ticket fee um, for that delivery method for the online, but maybe put that per ticket fee um, delivery method for the will call. So if I click a couple tickets, get a couple in my basket, again, you're gonna see that my printed home is $0, but my will call offers or has a $3 per ticket will call. So again, just another way to strategically push your patrons to that online sale. So we've gone through a couple handfuls of our clients, and like I said, they, they do it well. Um, and I want to thank all of them for allowing us to, to use them in our, in our webinar today. Um, and we've talked about different uh, tips, I guess, that you could add or to change in your system. Maybe you're using some of these and maybe you saw something today that you might want to switch around. Um, we would suggest, obviously, that you implement maybe one or two at a time. Um, it's important to test. When he said that earlier, test, test, test. So run reports. We've got some channel reports on the back end uh, to see if your conversion rate has gone up. And that's easy to find out. Make a couple changes. Um, a month later, run your reports. A month later, run those reports again and see if you've seen a shift. Another indicator of how well you're doing is to utilize maybe Google, Google ah, I can't talk, Google Analytics um, or Tag Manager to be able to check on those statistics and see if that cart abandonment rate has decreased since you've incorporated some of the tips and tricks that we've showed you today. What you're trying to do, honestly, is just to have a seamless, easy flow for your patrons to be able to complete that online transaction. Be transparent, 
Um, always brand accordingly. Use deep links where possible so that your patrons can move through that sales transaction very easily, quickly, without having to second guess where they're at or if they want to complete that sale. So at this point, I'm going to transition the webinar back to Wendy so that we have the opportunity to answer your questions. Thank you, Missy. And you know, again, thanks to all of our clients that are doing such a great job and are um, able to help us illustrate some of these tips and strategies. So at this point, um, we are ready to go ahead and pass it over to question and answer. And I want to um, make sure that we have everybody able to use the chat window and type in any questions that they have and then we will have um, Katie cover those for us. Katie, do you have any questions? Thank you, Wendy. Uh, we do have time for a couple of questions, which is exactly what we've received. So uh, let's start with our first one, which is how do I get all in pricing? I can grab the answer on that one. Thanks, Katie. Um, all in pricing is a site decision. So if you make that decision that you want all in pricing, uh, you have to use it for um, your entire site, and which means all of your events and performances, and your client services manager would be able to help you get that set up. Perfect. Thank you, Missy. And then our second question and our last question is, um, are there ways to find out what your cart conversion rate is without using Google Analytics or Tag Manager? Um, yeah, um, there's some reports on the back end uh, that can filter by channel. So channel meaning online versus box office. Um, so our suggestion would be to utilize those reports um, and we would suggest run that report um, right when you make a switch. You know, if you add a different buy button or if you add a different fee structure or something like that, run that report today and then uh, test it out and run it maybe a week or a month or two months away um, and see what happens with that online transaction. Has it increased, has it decreased? And obviously um, if, if the online conversion has increased then you know that you're doing a good job and then maybe at that point you can you know, add some more tips or tricks. But um, the um, channel reports that we have on the back end of the solution should be able to provide you with what you're looking for. Great, thank you Missy. And uh, Wendy, Thank did you have you. something you wanted to add? I'll just wrap up here. Thanks everybody again. Um, we did cover a lot of ground. I hope what you were able to walk away with was kind of a better understanding of how we can help you execute a great fan experience. I encourage you also to reach out to your customer service manager or sales director if you have further questions on anything that we covered here today because at the end of the day we are your partner and we only succeed when you succeed. So thank you again, everyone, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.